BioBalance HealthCast episode 215, Prostate Cancer and Testosterone Replacement. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Uh, I'm Brett Newcomb and this is Dr. Kathy Maupin and today we have good news. There's an article that has been released uh, surveying a study. The name of the article is Prostate Cancer in Hypogonadal Men Receiving Testosterone Therapy Observations from a Five-Year Median Follow-Up of Three Registries published in the Journal of Urology. Which is huge. It the is Journal huge. of Urology. And that's, that's where everybody's looking at prostate cancer and testosterone. So, so, so the reason that it's good news is there are tons of negative uh, publicity in various locations, in, in the mass media, Facebook, wherever you look, with lawyers that are advertising to say, men, if you have been given testosterone replacement, you may have a lawsuit and you may get rich and or at least help us get rich uh, by letting <laughs> us handle your case yeah. uh, as we sue all those dastardly doctors who prescribe testosterone for you mm -hmm. when it's causing you damage like heart attacks and cancer and whatever. And so people are very afraid and people are very concerned. And that's a good way to control you is to make you afraid. So you're controlled so you don't use testosterone, which has lots of benefits for the insurance companies, lots of benefits for the government. Right, because they don't have to pay for the treatment of testosterone, but it, it's negative benefits for you as an individual and more benefits for those same entities right. because they do uh, have issues then with all of the other illnesses that, that are that you are susceptible to if you don't replace your testosterone. Mm -hmm. what, what's interesting is how all of these studies are beginning to coalesce and they they remark uh, in this article by the way it said when, when they announced that they've looked at these different studies each of which had over a thousand men to see if there's an increase in the rates of prostate cancer among men who've received testosterone over a long period of time and they they said that the incidence is almost non statistically relevant. It's mm -hmm. less than one, one and a half percent mm -hmm. of men, uh, which is more than or less than what would be random. Uh, so they say that part of the challenge in getting this news out is the training that doctors have received and have not re-educated themselves about. Mm -hmm. That they, for years, it was thought that t increases in testosterone would increase the occurrence of prostate cancer. Because there was one study that that actually said that way mm -hmm. back when, and it wasn't a good study, it wasn't uh, well done, and that one study clouded the minds of every urologist. Well, and we because that's what they were trained with. We have reported before that the the leading guy, knowledgeable person on this, is Dr. Abraham Morgenthaler at Harvard, and he has written a book talking about exactly this issue, mm -hmm. and he says that his data shows. If, if I'm understanding all the medical specifics yeah. <laughs> correctly, that his data shows that if you have a deficit of testosterone, long-term deficit, there's mm -hmm. an increased likelihood that you get prostate cancer. Right. The, the exact reverse of what common wisdom is. Mm -hmm. And that if you do, uh, if you have existing traces of cancer, if, if you're going to develop it because of your genetics, you're going to develop it anyway. It, mm -hmm. It's not connected to, it's, uh, the, it's not caused by anything to do with testosterone. Mm -hmm. uh, but that if you have a deficit and you start to replace that deficit with testosterone, for a while the prostate will increase in size and PSA count will go up until the prostate is saturated with the appropriate amount of testosterone. That's right. That's and, actually what And then it doesn't continue describes. to increase. Right. So the prostate may enlarge a little bit and the PSA may go up. There's lots of things that increase your PSA mm -hmm. besides prostate cancer. So your PSA may increase. In including bad testing protocols. Right, right. You know, if you have sex within 24 hours of your test. It, right. Uh, if you that's that's the worst fasting. thing. Or if your urologist does a prostate exam and then sends you for your PSA. That should never happen. That's exactly what increases the PSA is a prostate exam. Mm. So. You shouldn't have sex for 72 hours, and you can't have a prostate exam right before your PSA. Same time frame. So those things make men very afraid. It's like getting an abnormal mammogram and then the biopsy saying, oh, it's okay. 
and it is it's very disconcerting and they come in and they go okay done done with testosterone which is crazy because it's actually going to save them from six or seven other illnesses that might kill them and this is not a real finding it is it's an anomaly dr morgan taylor says it's an anomaly it just goes up for a short period of time or if you were tested improperly it goes up for that one test and comes right back down and therefore you shouldn't get excited about it until you have follow-up testing right and until you have a free PSA not a total totals the screening test the next the next test is a total and a free which tells you how much is actually uh, which are two different measurements, two different tests. They're, yes, they're two. They're two different tests. They're combined in a panel, mm -hmm. so you can be sent for just the PSA, which is a screening test. If it's high, then you should be sent for a free PSA to see if that's low. If it's low, then that increases your your level of um, suspicion, and then you have to have a biopsy. Mm -hmm. But there are other tests. You don't always have to have a biopsy because that makes men fearful as well because that sounds painful and it is or it can be. Um, you can also get an, um, an ultra ultrasound mm -hmm. of the prostate mm -hmm. so to look for any kind of masses. So it's not that you have to have, you get a PSA and, oh my gosh, then I'm having a prostate a prostatectomy or I'm having hormonal therapy. It's, it is not that. Yeah. It is something, it is some, there are lots of steps in between. You shouldn't be afraid of it. And this is now saying you shouldn't be afraid of taking testosterone. And we've known that. We've known the studies. We've read the studies Morgan Taylor has done and has depended on. And all the other urologists who have been screaming in, in, in the wilderness that testosterone is the right thing to replace and it right. keeps men healthy and it keeps men's prostates healthy. He did a study. If you remember when he was he was talking at the mm -hmm. conference we went to, yes, he did a study where he took prostate cells from young men, prostate cells from older men, and then they switched and they took the blood from the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay, so young men's prostate cells became precancerous with a low level of testosterone from the old guys, and the old men with the young men's blood resolved. They got better. They reversed. They did not have any anomalies there. So he he ascertained that this means that testosterone at a higher level keeps you from getting prostate cancer, and and hypogonadism or low testosterone causes you to have a, a possible beginning of prostate cancer. Well, and what's fascinating about all of this for me is that in in many ways i feel like you and i are like sisyphus pushing the rock up the hill we are and it rolls back down and we push the rock up uh -huh. the hill and it rolls back down kathy began her work primarily with women mm -hmm. who suffer from low testosterone women have and need testosterone at least need it as much if not more than men mm -hmm. but it is not thought of as a woman's hormone Right. And so the FDA doesn't approve testosterone treatments for women. The insurance companies won't pay for testosterone treatments for women, although they will for men, uh, because it's a man's thing. And so we ha and, and a lot of doctors say women don't need it, or they don't need the amount they actually need to be clinically beneficial. I mean, right. so they're you, you get or challenged. they need just so little. They say, oh, you just need this little bit. Well, right. No symptoms resolve. You, you get challenged all the time about the dosage issues yes, that, that you I believe do. they need uh, a functional symptom reducing dose. Yes. And other doctors tend to say, oh, that's too much. You know, we don't know what that'll cost. Well, we do. Uh, but we do. <laughs> It won't cause anything. It won't cause anything bad. Exactly. So we feel like we're pushing the rock up the hill to get women and their doctors to accept the concept that testosterone replacement at clinically sufficient levels is a, a goal and a good thing right. and not a, a charlatan, you know, we're just trying to sell something that doesn't work for women. Women don't need that old poo. I mean, why would a woman, <laughs> why would a woman need a sex life? A number of doctors say that for That's women right. who are in their seventies. It's like, or who are in their forties. Men, male doctors who, and even female doctors who are younger than forty, say. So why do you need a sex life after yeah. 40? Yeah, you're not having kids anymore. Yeah, so that's, you know? that's their So there's a mentality pattern. there that 
that we challenge constantly, and so we're pushing that rock up the hill. And then that, then there, that whole little hill gets washed away when you switch to the concept of men and testosterone. Right. And you started just treating men, and then though I mean women, and those mm-hmm. women would bring in the men that they loved and said, "Fix him." <laughs> and so now your practice yeah. is more than half. I was men. trained taking care of men, but I didn't do it initially. Yeah, I, I didn't think when I first would. To do, when I first learned to do pellet mm-hmm. therapy and hormone therapy, I was trained to take care of men, right. but I went, ah, never going to need that because there's somebody else out there that will do it. I have well, to tell you, I never. There's nobody I never else in my out life there. Thought I would go to a gynecologist for treatment, but well, here I am today. <laughs> and for years, every time I went to something, any kind of social event, I always had. Men come up to me and say, "Could yeah. you be my doctor?" Yeah, you yeah. know, and I'm like, Meh. "No, I'm a gynecologist." Because right. they'd hear me talking about different things right. that were important to them, and they say, "Could you be my doctor?" Well, doctor, gynecologists do take care of men for infertility, mm-hmm. which are hormonal issues, and and fertility issues, and that's acceptable. Yes. But it's a little bit less acceptable to treat men with. Hormones, but I was trained by a gynecologist with, who does with, both with weight conditions, men and women, with heart conditions, yeah, there's, with other conditions. They want, they've always aging. wanted us to be more primary care, right? And and this is primary, primary care. care. Well, and so what's exciting then when you start to talk about men and go back to the reference of the myth of Sisyphus mm-hmm. is. Everybody accepts that testosterone is a masculine concern, that men are testosteroneized. Uh, and they think that makes them aggressive, which it doesn't. I remember one time when, years ago, my uh, my wife came home. We had two uh, young French men living with us for six months, and so there were three men in the house. And she walked in one afternoon and stopped in the front door and got all of our attention, sniffed slowly. And said, ah, the testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. think of it as a man's thing. Mm-hmm. So when you think of it in terms of men, there are three sort of mass concept. Uh, uh, misconceptions? Mis- misconceptions, yeah. Conventional wisdom things that are wrong mm-hmm. about men and testosterone. One is that only athletes take it, and they take it because they're in, to, to get steroidally pumped up and they get road rage and all mm-hmm. that other kind of aggression stuff from taking testosterone, so that's dangerous. The other is that men who take testosterone replacement ha- are more likely to have heart attacks and strokes Which because is- they take testosterone. And there's so much research, research out there that says that is not true. Mm-hmm. And then the, the third myth is the myth of prostate cancer and the increased risk. So all of these things are, in terms of the research that is available and the new stuff that's coming out, challenging those myths of conventional wisdom, but also of conventional medical treatment. Mm -hmm. But the challenge for us is still to get physicians to be conscious of these conflicts and to do their own research and make up their own mind instead of just reflexively knowing what they've always known, which turns out to be wrong. I take these articles from Science Daily and yeah. from from uh, urology journals, which the doctors that I refer to, or mm-hmm. I have to refer to urologists just for whatever, like a first exam or right. if a uh, primary care doesn't want to do it. So I will send this article to them because yeah. I bet they're too busy to read their own journals. Right. This was is from their own journal mm-hmm. and um, and then went to Science Daily. Uh, but that's where we found it. And right. so this is going to be something that I'm hoping they'll at least read in a letter. And I'll be handing this out to my male patients. Because yeah, take this to your doctor. Take say, this to your doctor. This? this is something that you need to know about. And you need to stop being fearful. Fear is a, is a very medically dangerous thing. It causes anxiety. It increases cortisol. I don't want my patients to be fearful of a treatment that I know is not going to make them worse. Yeah. That very likely is going to cure them of three or four different illnesses, diabetes, prevent Alzheimer's, prevent prevent heart disease and stroke because it makes the heart muscles stronger. Uh, it, it actually decreases cholesterol. It decreases uh, insulin resistance or prediabetes. So giving testosterone back to men in a level for men that is normal for a young healthy man is exactly what they need to prevent all these other illnesses and heart disease is one of them that it prevents. There was a study just that just um, a few months ago, I believe it was in October, and we had, um, it was a study of all the studies of testosterone, men, and heart disease and stroke. 
And they looked at every study between 1973 Mm -hmm. and 2012, and they said, it doesn't increase it. All Mm. of these studies say it doesn't increase it, and they were combating the one study that had come out and said, oh, it increases stroke, which is the one that the lawyers have attached to. Right, and and that's bad science. I mean, when you look at the research protocols and the statistical manipulation of the data, they were done incorrectly. That that's the study that was done by at the VA. Right. Small study that the lawyers are attaching all of their uh, very expensive people, commercials to. All over sixty five, all military veterans who had histories of heart attacks already, who were given testosterone, and then some more of them subsequently had heart attacks. So they said, Whoa, don't do this, you'll have a heart attack. So many men stop doing this and feel terrible and have Well and have had other issues then and, and then become evolved become obese and their cholesterol goes up and everything else that yeah. they had benefited from reverses. So so that one study, we now have one that combats it for heart disease and stroke. This study covers the second part, well, which is prostate cancer. So we don't have to worry about that. All men need to worry about prostate cancer. Okay, It's just like estrogen that's not oral does not increase your risk mm-hmm. of breast cancer. But all women have to get their mammograms because anybody can get breast cancer. Yeah, well, no. anybody with breasts that can get breast cancer. So now anybody with a prostate can get prostate cancer. If you take testosterone, that doesn't mean that it's caused it. It just means that you genetically and you may have broken some genes with toxins in the in the environment, and therefore you can get prostate cancer anyway. So men should still get evaluated. Yeah. Well, when I was a young man, I never thought about my prostate. Never paid any attention to it. Didn't know what it was. Didn't know. I mean, it just was a word I heard. But as I got older, all the other men that I knew that were getting older were asking each other, so have you had your prostate exam? Or, you know, have you checked for that? The doctors began to say, oh, you need one every year or two. You, uh-huh. We've got to keep track of this because cancer's coming. And, and the common wisdom among men inevitable. is that if you live long enough, if something else doesn't kill you, prostate cancer will. Mm-hmm. And so men of a certain age become conscious of and then afraid of their prostate. Mm-hmm. And they're worried about, oh, my gosh, the big C. I'm going to get cancer. I'm going to die, which mm-hmm. actually most people don't die from cancer anymore. Uh, right. of various kinds of cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's a scary thing for men. And so to have this myth out there that getting testosterone replaced, which helps across the board in so many ways, but increases your risk of prostate cancer. So you weigh the balance. You know, Do I want to have the quality of life or do I want to be afraid of cancer? But now you don't have to do now that. Now you don't have to weigh the balance. Now the weights, the weight went to- totally toward taking testosterone and being healthier and not getting prostate cancer because low testosterone is the issue. And that's what Morgan Taylor says, and that's part of what's in this research article, so, is so that let me low give you testosterone the is the problem. Give you the reference again. It's from Science Daily, uh, November the 25th, 2014. So it's very recent. Mm-hmm. The title of the article is Incidence of Prostate Cancer in Hypogonadal Men Receiving Testosterone Therapy. Observations from a five-year median follow-up of three different registries or three different studies. And it was originally published in the Journal of Urology, 2014. And that's important if you want to go look it up. I don't know if you can get to the urology journal because sometimes they're but coded doctor for doctors, can. but doctors can. And you can get to Science Daily. Yeah. So I hope you research what we've told you, and we will um, post the article, or the Science Daily article, which is the abstract from the research study, uh, on our website at biobalancehealth.com. And we okay. will also publish it in our blog, which is drkathymoppin.com. All right. As always, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.